All right, we want to welcome Angie Christensen out to the podcast today. She is a wife and a mother of three adopted children and a passionate educator on holistic healing. Angie has been trained in holistic nutrition, herbs, homeopathy, biomedical interventions, neurofeedback, and energy therapy. She teaches cooking classes and she hosts cooking retreats to to others. And she also likes to, I love this part, she likes to do a makeover in the delicious food makeovers in the kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) Who doesn't need that as a mom? (laughs) Make it more appealing for her kids. So... (laughs) Yeah. I tell people you can save just about everything except for ca- cotton candy. I can't save that one, but <laughs> I know I don't pretty much know. anything else. I don't think you can even feed that to your chickens. <laughs> Have sweet eggs. <laughs> so, Angie, you want to tell us a little about you and who you are and your journey that got you to where you're at right now? Yeah. Um, so I grew up in a completely conventional American life. I ate like a typical American. I had all the typical American medical stuff. And what that meant was that by the time I was a teenager, I was diagnosed with multiple things and I was on multiple prescriptions. Um, By the time I was a teenager, I had fibromyalgia. I had irritable bowel syndrome. I had interstitial cystitis. I had depression, anxiety, And I was on multiple prescriptions every day just to function. And then as I became an adult, the thing that really pushed me over the edge is I had really, really unusually aggressive endometriosis. And so it was literally eating through my different organs. Um, So instead of it just being a pain and a fertility issue, it became a life-threatening issue. And I had- Oh, how common is that? Um. Probably I've probably more common that. than you would think, but I mean, no, like it's, in- it's common to have, but I didn't realize I've never heard of it being like life. Oh, yeah. it can be really, really that painful. it could be well, not I knew that, but I meant I didn't realize it could actually cause you know major yeah. like that in terms of eating away your tissues and death kind of thing. Yeah, endometriosis is really it's kind of a cousin of cancer. It's it's normal tissue that your body should have, but it's growing in the wrong place. Right. And so in my case, um, it ate all the way through my colon and was growing through the inside of my colon. And so I was bleeding wow. out through my bowels and and all sorts of things. And so I had six surgeries in five years. And by the last surgery, when they had to take out my appendix and part of my colon and all of this, I said, that's it. (laughs) This is enough Um, because I'd done everything the doctors told me to do. And I was just getting worse. And I, I, I honestly walked out of that sixth surgery and I said, you know, this is my body. My doctors aren't losing any sleep over this. And I'm, my life is falling apart. So that was the moment I like took ownership of my body. And that is what changed everything for me. Because instead of just going from doctor to doctor and waiting for someone else to figure this out, I realized this is my body, my responsibility. And I took it on. And from that moment, I started studying, learning, training, and changing my lifestyle. And that sixth surgery was the last one. I had to have, I was able to turn everything around, get off all my prescriptions, um, quit having surgery all the time. And that, because I feel like I've lived in both worlds, you know, I've lived in the traditional American lifestyle world. I've experienced the consequences of that. And then I've lived in this other world where through lifestyle changes and holistic medicine, I've lived a totally different life. And so I'm, I am very passionate about teaching people that that's possible because I've lived it. Yeah. Isn't it crazy though? That's, I think probably most people in the natural world um, that have become providers of some kind, you know, uh, usually got into it because their life was messed up. Something they were trying to yeah. fix themselves and by so doing, hey, there's a whole nother world out there. I learned this a lot and stuff. I don't want other people to have to suffer. I'm going to help educate them and let them know the the pathways. Yeah. Because these other, there's so many, like one of the things I love about the holistic world is there's so many options. You know, it, it, it's not even like, how do I find the right one? It's like, you probably have 10 options that would work. You're, you have to pick one, you know, there's so many things that heal and, and yet you'll never hear about them unless either you go searching for them or someone else says, Oh, Hey, look, guess what I learned about? 
it be just because there are no commercials, you know, there are no any of that stuff for this stuff. And so, yeah, once we learn about it, we want to share because we know what it was like to live without it. And a lot of times in the medical, um, you know, world, it's really is one option. There's just one way. And yeah. so a lot oh, of there's time- more than one option because there's more than one drug, but oh, <laughs> it's pretty much it's pharmaceutical based. If they can't cut it out, they try to drug it up. Yep. And that's what's in their bag. Yeah. And that's because that's all they're taught. You know, I, sure. I, I had a doctor as uh, someone, a doctor explained to me what they're taught in medical school. And that is how to take the symptoms someone's experiencing, match it to the right test. And then from the right tests, from the test results, match it to the right drug. Right. Right. Like it, it's not that they don't, I think most doctors have really good intentions, but that's the only option they are taught. And there are so many and the others problem, and yeah. they're, they cause less problems. You know, I think that's one of the things that, that I have come to learn is that, you know, there is a time and a place for surgery. There is a time and a place for pharmaceutical medication, but you've got all these other options that have no or little side effects that we should be trying first, first, right? Not last. Mm -hmm. And most of us don't find the holistic options until the drugs and surgery have failed. And it really should be the other way around. Mm -hmm. And so the more we can get the word out, educate people, give them a toolbox of natural options, you find that 90% of the situations can be addressed through holistic. And not only that, the other thing I love about holistic medicine is it usually cures instead of treats. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that is something that I love. Yeah, there's no pharmaceutical that is ever no. based on trying to cure anything. Right. No, you know but that. holistic medicine does. It, yeah. it actually well, it allows your cure. body to cure. Right. And yeah. that's the difference. That's totally the difference. So, that's right. so your name is simply divine eats. Did mm -hmm. I said that right. Simply divine eating. Simply mm -hmm. divine eating. So obviously that goes back to something. How did you come up with that? How did you, what got you to that point And what does that mean? So when I started, so it was 20 plus years ago now after that sixth surgery, when I decided to change my life. And the first thing I addressed was food, right? Because if there is anything we can agree on in both the pharmaceutical and natural world is that food matters, right? <laughs> like well, we may I don't not know about that. I, don't know that that is like... thing. I think I actually don't know if I agree with you on that because it's crazy how much like people that have you know, all this colitis and all this other stuff. There's doctors all the time saying, oh, what you eat does not have anything to do with it. It's an autoimmune. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. And I'm just like, are you absolutely crazy? Yep. Like her sister had yeah. colon cancer. And after they cut out her, her guts for colon cancer, they give her a dang hamburger in the hospital that has all this other stuff. It's like, whoa, what? How does eating- oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there, there's definitely a, a huge breakdown there. Just but kidding. you know, even if you even if you get to the point of yes, the first thing we should look at is is food. What I ran into is nobody agrees on what that is, oh. and and that has come to the point that because even your doctor will tell you to eat healthy, right. but what they define as healthy. You know, it's that not, pyramid thing that they gave that, oh, that, that's right, that was right. put together by Nabisco. And have Kellogg <laughs> cereal every day. Yeah, okay. yeah, you know, and so one of the challenges I think a lot of people face is most people want to eat healthy. They're kind of trying at least to some degree. And, but we, we don't know what that means. It doesn't mean anything anymore because, you know, does that mean you eat according to the food pyramid? Does that mean you eat keto? Does that mean you eat vegetarian? Does that mean you eat, right? Like, it, it low fat, high fat, it doesn't mean anything anymore. And so when I started into the, of trying to heal myself through food, that was the first thing I read in, ran into there, there is no agreement and it creates so much stress. And I have met so many people who have given up essentially on healthy eating because they're like, well, they told me to do this and I tried that. And by the time I tried that, they told me to do this and blah, 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 you right. know, and it's like the over or people who start researching themselves. Right. It's and true. they run into that, all those differing opinions. And it's so overwhelming that people are like, that's it. I'm going back to my organ. Well, it's well, kind of like, you know, by 10 o'clock in the morning, you're supposed to have your grain drink and you're supposed to have your smoothie and you're supposed to have your protein. You're supposed to like, it gets to be so overwhelming. It's and overwhelming. I, I've seen that with it's like, you know, you get um, it, nutritional fatigued. 
That's well, right. not only that is you can go down so many rabbit holes. And if you go down far enough on a rabbit hole, you're going to find out that even things that you are should be and are healthy for you cannot be healthy in some circumstances. And right. so then you're like, wait, I thought kale was good for me. How come it can then cause this? And you know. Yep, you end up with oxalate toxicity. Yeah, yeah it's there, there, there's all of these. And and so people, I think most people want to try, but it is overwhelming and it's contradictory. And and what's the point of changing your lifestyle to do something if six months or a year later they're gonna tell you to do the opposite? And and so that just is so frustrating. So what I did, I have kind of a weird brain. I, I have a brain that sees patterns. Like I don't have to look for it. I don't have to try. It's just what it does. And so I can read a ton of material. And what immediately sticks out to me is here are the common links. Boom, boom, boom. Here are the parts that don't fit. Boom, boom, boom. It's just, it's how my brain works. And so as I studied and studied and studied nutrition, what I was looking for is what is absolutely consistent. What could you take to the bank take to your grave that is true now was true 6,000 years ago will be true 6,000 years for, from now is true in Japan is true in America is true in Polynesia. like what are the actual truths about nutrition and that's what I wanted to discover and it was over a long period of a lot of years of studying and trying things out that I found there were four principles I call them the four cornerstones um, that will be true for everyone in every situation. And it takes all the guesswork out, but it's not like giving anyone a prescribed diet because there are too many variables in genetics, in lifestyle, in our basic health that we're starting with. Uh, prescribed diets don't work. Um, not to mention that they're too emotionally confining for people. And so what I found were these four principles. And so they work like the cornerstone of a house, right? If you, if every single person had the same four cornerstones of a house, you can still have completely different houses, right? Right. But they're built on a solid foundation. But if those four cornerstones aren't in place, it doesn't matter what you try, it will not work. And so I actually have a video on my YouTube channel. You can, it's, it's a two hour class on those four cornerstones, totally free. Um, if you just go to Simply Divine Eating on YouTube, where I explain those four things and it's it's totally paradigm shifting for people and so then from that has grown everything else I do in my business teaching people okay well how once you incorporate those how what how do you cook how do you make over your recipes so that you're still cooking things your kids love um, I teach classes in hands-on fermenting because that becomes a key in getting your gut healed and yet people are so scared of it right like I know. I've so many people I with really their life these rotten food. I know yeah. I get it. Yeah, they well, have the jars, you, you know, saw. and they're sitting empty in their kitchen. Or I met people who even done it and not dared eat it mm -hmm. because they're afraid if they do it wrong, they're going to hurt someone. And so I do demos and classes on fermenting because once you get it, it's so simple. Well, um, did you see then, like on the website on on the Be Healthy Utah website, we have a learning with Liz and we have a video on how to how to make it. I mean, just, yeah. we do it step by step. So it's like it's simple and easy. This is what you do. It's not difficult. It is. Once you've done it, you're like, oh, that's all there is to it, you know. Yeah. But it is so scary and overwhelming at yeah. first. You know, and I also, I do herbs, I do homeopathics, I've got classes on the emotional aspect of healing, because that's a huge thing too. You know, once you get into this holistic world, there's just, there's so, so many options that you've got. Yep. Mm -hmm. So when you are looking at these four pillar, pillars, where is it you kind of like to start then with a client? Well, I know you said there was a two hour video, but basically in a nutshell, what would the four pillars be? Um, I, I'd be happy. To, you just can't explain them that fast. Okay. okay it's not um, so, so that's why I've just put the video up so that people can go see it. Okay. Um, but essentially, you know, once, once someone understands those four principles and you've got the paradigm in, sh in place, then what I do is help them go through and make one change at a time, because that's the other enemy in nutrition is the overwhelm, right? Mm -hmm. And almost anything you're taught to do is telling you to do everything at once. And people try it for two to three weeks and they're done and, and they go back because well, let's be honest, most people won't make it two to three weeks, <laughs> <laughs> two to three days, maybe. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the reality is with eating and this is the, I mean, and, and I mean, I know better. Right. But the reality is, is, is time because eating healthy 
takes time. It does. No, it's not like, oh, I can just go in, grab a box of cereal, pour some cereal, pour some milk and eat it and I'm good, right? You have to cook it, you have to make it, you have to do something. But it's, there is- it's a process. And so, <laughs> so that's the hardest thing for people that try to go to a more, a better way of eating is this is going to be a little bit more time involved because of what the process is, right? You're not just getting yeah. something out of a box. And I think that's what becomes the breaking point for a lot of people because they're so quick. It's like, they're so much in a hurry. Oh, I got to hurry out. Uh, okay. You know, they finally give in and just have that quick thing. And then they're on that path back down to where they were. Yeah. And in, I address that in the fourth cornerstone. And one of the things I teach people is the difference between quick and instant. Where we get in trouble with eating is always when we try to make something instant, right? Open the package and eat, drive through and eat. When it's like zero effort, that is the food that is the most harmful to our health is when it's instant. But you can learn the skills to make healthy eating simple and easy. Um, But we do, we have to get rid of the, we have to get rid of the mindset of instant. There just, there is no place for instant the most instant healthy food gets is picking an apple from a tree, right? Like, but that's still easy, you know, but this thing of instant food is something that we have to shift, Mm -hmm. shift away from. You know, I always say that if you're going to be making food, why don't you just substitute out those things that aren't healthy for the healthy things? Because you're already doing it anyways. So that's kind of like, what are these things that you can just swap out because you're already making it anyways but yes that is the true um statement about we're just used to instant because you know um you know like shane talked about that you can't just go open up a, a box of cereal but yet you know what you can make some granola and open that up or you can open up your can and have some nuts you know things like that there there is some good healthy options out there and also it's really easy if we're just going to be making something, just substitute those good things with those things that aren't very, aren't or the best adding, for you. Adding more healthy things to it. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing that I find is that when someone understands why, that is where motivation comes from. And so when, for example, if we just tell people you need to do this or you need to quit eating this that never works. Mm -hmm. But like I have a sugar makeover class where we spend six weeks, right? And we help people actually understand the chemistry of how all the different types of sugar work in their bodies and what they do. And we talk about all the emotional implications of sugar and how to find joy in, in healthy eating. And, and you go through this process where people actually understand how this all works and you give them the tools of how to do it in a positive way. And people are willing to do that. And they're able to do that. Like I see people come out of that six weeks, they can totally change their life because you've one, you've given them understanding, which is comes, gives them the motivation. And then two, you've given them the skills and the tools of how to do it. And as long as people have those two things, I really see people be enormously successful. Well, that's like our, one of our very first principles with um, Be Healthy Utah that we put in place when we are doing the conferences or anything that we do, and that's knowledge. Because when you have knowledge, then you can change. You, and that's the thing is most people don't know what that knowledge is. And then you can then empower yourselves, which then you can elevate your lives. But it first starts out with, knowing these things that can benefit benefit us and most of these things we just haven't had that knowledge yet we just haven't been taught yeah and all you have to do is pick one you know you really don't people think sometimes that until they get their diet perfect or their lifestyle perfect they're not going to experience any benefits but really all you have to do is pick one thing Um, whatever. And what that one thing is might vary on the person and what they need to address most quickly. But when you pick one thing and then you watch and feel the shift, 
then you've got the motivation to take on the next one, right? And, and you can just keep climbing that ladder, keep climbing those stairs and watch your life improve and change. But no one can do everything at once. None of us can shift everything at once. But you can experience dramatic change in your life from one thing. You know, when I when I made my first changes after that, that last surgery, the first thing I fixed was sugar. Just that one thing. I didn't know, you know, 90% of what I know now. But I, I fixed the sugar component. And both the interstitial cystitis and the irritable bowel syndrome were gone. So when you say you fixed, weeks. you mean you just quit, quit eating? I changed how I ate sugar. I learned how it should work in my body. And, and then I switched how I ate it to match, match how it should work in my body. And really three weeks, two diseases gone. That's you know, there's other things that took longer and took more tools, but sometimes even just one major shift can create dramatic results for people. And once you've experienced that, then you're a convert. You know, I feel the same way about homeopathy. It's like when you, homeopathy is probably the last holistic thing that most people learn about because it gets the least press. But when you experience a homeopathic shift your life, like you are an instant convert. You know, one of the first times I experienced that was um, my, my last adopted daughter, very soon after we had adopted her, she came down with influenza and, you know, the kind like flat on the couch, not moving, not responding, just and that's when you as a parent worry, right? When the kid's not complaining, they're not, right. that's when you know they're really, really sick. And we were supposed to be on a plane in three days for a family vacation. And I knew how to address that with herbs, but I couldn't have gotten her all, all the way better and on a plane in three days with herbs. And so I'm like, okay, we'll try this with homeopathy. And when we, it took me three tries, but when we got the right homeopathic for her, she was up and eating at the table in 10 minutes and the next day symptom free. Nice. You know, it's like once you experience that once, you're like, I'm in. right? And so really to, to switch over to this holistic lifestyle, people just have to experience the benefits once. And, and then that's enough to keep you on the path. Well, and even like you said, you had already had experiences probably with herbs and eating and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And it's just a progression, right? So it went from yep. eating to herbs, homeopathics, you know, things like that. And that's kind of what yeah. we do anyway, right? We kind yeah. of, once you're on that path, you know, it's kind of like the old saying, if you, if you just, if you're stagnant, you're going to get run over, right? So you have to keep moving and you want to keep going forward. So you're going to learn more and more and more. And, and, and the, cra the craziest thing is, is sometimes you get to where you learn, you have so much knowledge in your background, you forget half the stuff. And so you forget to do it. Like we were having this conversation, <laughs> the two of us the other day, it's like, you know, our fermented vegetables are in our fridge, but they got put behind something. It's like, when was the last time we've had them? It's been a couple of weeks. That's just stupid. And yet yeah. we know better, right? Yeah. I mean, we do classes on it. We know better. I know. Yeah, we all we all have our ebbs, ebbs and our flows, but at least when you've got the toolbox, right? Like the more things you can do to feel that that holistic toolbox, then no matter what you face, the other thing I've found is it gets rid of the fear. Yeah. Um, you know, especially these days where people are so, so afraid of disease. Well, we're afraid of disease when we don't know what to do and we think there's no way we can combat these disastrous consequences. But there again, once you have used some of these holistic tools and you've watched what should have been a serious disease or even what was supposed to be a lifelong diagnosis, like I've got lots of those that were supposed to be incurable, right? And once you've experienced those being healed, the fear start of, of illness and disease starts to dissipate. And so I love that in this holistic world, the other thing that happens to you is the fear goes away because you have this toolbox and you know, well, if, if I face really serious things, you know, I faced years and years and years later, I fa faced a massive bleeding colon tumor. Um, and I chose not to get a biopsy, but all the indications were right, that that was malignant and it was pretty serious. And that was not nearly as scary to me after the previous experiences I'd had with the holistic world as it would have been to me, you know, 20 years ago, because I had this toolbox and I was 
was able to deal with that and um, in a completely holistic way and get a clean colonoscopy later. And it, but but the biggest difference to me was just being able to face that without the fear because well, I knew that, these things work. Isn't that the kind of the truth right now, especially like with COVID? It's like people in the natural yeah. world are like, okay, yeah, and let's move on. Let's we do this, right. this, and this, but it's the other people that are just scared because they're listening to the news and how many cases and all that stuff that are just petrified and then they're wearing their masks all the time and making their kids wear their masks and now their kids got mental issues going on <laughs> you know it's and it's really because they don't have any tools right you know it's terrifying to face something if you feel like there's nothing you can do right well but as we help like people feel their toolbox then they're not scared well, for instance, even like with us, it's like, he'll be, well, I was dealing with a COVID patient today. So he comes home and he gets colloidal silver and he like sprays it, sprays it up his nose. Well, that's your first defense towards COVID right there, because that's where it's a, you know, respiratory, it's going to gonna, gonna go into your nose and then it stays there for a few days. So you got a big enough viral load for it to then make you sick. So if you clean it yeah. out, then you don't have an issue. You know, just a yeah. simple thing like that, right? Just a, simple. a very simple but effective tool. Yeah. And so the more tools we can give people, the more we can fight the fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so you do classes on basically on eating. You do classes on home homeopathy. You do classes on the four pillars, it sounds like. So kind of a well-rounded approach. Now, where are you? Where are you actually located? So I live in Willard, Utah. Um, driving north north by Ogden, Lord, which is the suburb of Ogden, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and do people do they do you do basically just online classes? Do you do them in person? Do people um, come to your house? What is it that you? How do you take care of people? Ninety percent of what I do is online, um, and you know I do occasionally do in person retreats, and I teach in person at conferences and stuff. But but other than that, most of what I do is either via through live Zoom classes or actually pre-recorded classes that you can purchase and do at your own, at your own pace. At pace, nice. So how can people get a hold of you then? So my website, www.simplydivineeating.com, or like I say, you can find, I've got lots of free classes on YouTube. If you go to the Simply Divine Eating channel on, on YouTube, um, you can find lots of resources in, in both of those places that I've got, some that are paid, some that are free, um, all sorts of stuff. And if people want to come and see you, like, how does that look? Like, do they just email you? Do they call you? And do you want to give out your email and a phone number as well? Um, yeah. So you can, you can reach out to me at support at simply And then that way you can, that's usually more effective than trying to message me through, um, the website or whatever is just to email me directly. Um, I also have um, a Facebook community called the Simply Divine Eating Community. And that's kind of my question and answer hub um, where people who've taken my classes or you don't have to have taken my classes, just people who are interested in what I do can come there. And the reason I love that, even though I don't like lots of what Facebook is doing these days, the reason that's so helpful is because Usually if people have questions for me, 10 or 20 other people have the same question and it allows me to answer questions for everybody at the same time instead of through countless emails. And then you also get the perspective of all these different people who've gathered in that community. Right. You get my answer, but you also get tons of other great answers. So that's a great resource as well. And it's a closed community. You have to ask to join. So no one else can see what's going on there. You know, if you're like me, where you've got family members who don't live this way <laughs> and you don't necessarily want them watching all your questions, you know, it, it's a closed place to do that. So <laughs> no problem. So we just want to thank you, Angie, for being involved in the podcast. Um, and also let our you're listeners welcome. know that Angie's going to be involved in our conference as well. She has a booth there and, um, Hopefully we're going to be able to figure out a way that we can get her to be, talk with people as well. The most important thing is um, the conference is April 22nd and 23rd. And we do exactly the whole conference is based on exactly what Angie's trying to do. And that's share knowledge, let people understand there's options out there. And most important to figure out what you can do to get yourself well. And that's truly what we're all trying to do in this mm -hmm. world yeah. of 
holistic health. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. You had great information and um, make sure you go to the videos and the things that she's, she's let you know about so that you can learn more about what she does and how she does it. So thanks again. See you later. And welcome. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye.